Hello everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in the book of Revelation. We're in Revelation chapter 17 and we left off last time in verse 4. So we'll pick it up right there. Get your Bible. Open it up to Revelation 17. The scripture Verse by Verse website is found at thebibleversebyverse.com and you can study the whole Bible with me. You can go through the Bible with me, three complete series, verse by verse, from Genesis through Revelation, using my audio Bible messages. All you have to do is click and listen. Whatever book of the Bible you want to study, it's there for you. All you need to bring is your Bible. And I hope you have your Bible ready today and open to Revelation chapter 17. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to begin reading in uh, verse number 1 of Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels who had the seven vials, or bowls, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment upon the great whore who sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the habitations of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. And I mentioned last time that this great whore, this great harlot, is a reference to false religion in the world. There would be a great false religion, great meaning large, all-encompassing false religion in the world in the last day. Today there are multitudes of false religions. Any religion that teaches anything other than salvation through repentance and receiving Christ as Savior and submitting to his Lordship is a false religion. I don't care what the label is. I talked about that last time. So anything other than that is a false religion. And God would call it the great whore, the religious whore. And those who adhere to those religions, according to the Word of God here, are guilty of spiritual fornication against God. So let's read on, verse 3. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, and having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and bedecked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, mother of harlots and abomination of the earth. This false religious system will be great in the eyes of the world. Very wealthy, full of pomp, full of ceremony, looking very religious, touching all the senses with its false religious activity, great in the eyes of the masses, but an abomination to God. Beware of the crowds when it comes to religion. Beware of the crowds. When referring to his people, Jesus always called them his little flock. Jesus also said, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. See what the Bible teaches 
concerning salvation, and this is why few find it, okay? Because the Bible teaches that the only people who will be saved are those who, number one, repent of their sin, number two, receive Jesus Christ into their life as their Savior and submit to his Lordship, make a commitment to follow him. Unless you take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple, Jesus said. There are people who will protest and say, well, Jesus is the only way. Only few will be saved. Yeah. And then within that crowd, even you can whittle it down even more because there are many professing Christians who promote an easy believism. All you have to do is believe and you'll be saved. Just believe. Very popular among modern evangelicalism. It's a heresy. Never, ever tell <clears throat> a lost sinner that they need to repent. Jesus said it time and time again. The apostle said it time and time again. John the Baptist said it. The church has always said it. Repent. It's part of salvation. You can't run from it. Oh, yes. And I've heard people say this. But if you tell people that they have to repent and submit to the lordship of Jesus Christ, if you have to tell them that you have to do that, that you have to do that to be saved, instead of just believe. Just a few people will be saved. Well, no kidding. What did Jesus say? Narrow is the way that leads to life, and few there be that find it. This world religion is very popular. It will be very popular, just like false religions are popular today. They're a dime a dozen. They're all over the place. There's a lot more people involved in false religions of all the different stripes than there are who are truly saved. It's always the way it's been. And this false religion in the last days, it's going to be popular. The whole world, except for a very small remnant of believers who trust in Christ, who follow the Lamb, will belong to this world system, this religious system. And every last one of them is going to hell. It's a comfortable way. It's the popular way. It's the pomp and ceremony way. And it's the way to damnation. Verse 6. And I saw that woman was drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great amazement. And the angel said unto me, Why dost thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Throughout the century, throughout the centuries, Bible-believing Christians, the truly saved who will not compromise their faith and their obedience to Jesus Christ, throughout the centuries, Bible-believing, saved people, true Christians, have been murdered in cold blood because they lived for Jesus and spoke the word of God. It's always been that way. That's why it's such a damnable, disgusting, despicable thing for modern evangelicals to warm up to the unsaved of the world and try to be like them because they want to be popular. How putrid is that? You know, I love church history. Always have. I aced out a few semesters in, in church history, and I loved it so much, I went back and I read the textbook on my own, I think, two or three times. It's always been this way. Always been this way. The true Christians have been persecuted for the sake of Christ. They've been persecuted for not towing the unbiblical religiosity of corrupt men who claim to represent God. The religionists who do not know Christ are here by God called whores. And that is what they are, spiritual whores. They are an abomination to God, as he says. 
The Bible teaches that any religion that talks about or venerates anyone or anything as much or more than the Lord Jesus Christ is a spiritual whore, and it is represented in these verses. Verse 8. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, shall wonder when they behold the beast that was and is not, and yet is the unsaved marvel at this false religious system. It's on its way to perdition. It's on its way to damnation. But the multitudes think it's just wonderful. God's about to destroy it. And they think that it's the greatest religion ever. False ornate religion that appeals to the five senses can easily lead people astray. And that is why we should not, in, we should not judge religion by our senses, by your feelings. Judge it by the Word of God. Judge it by Scripture. If it doesn't follow the Bible, it's wrong, and it will eventually be destroyed. Verse 9, And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Rome is known as the city of seven hills. This false religious system that leads so many astray will be headquartered in Rome, Italy. Verse 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other has not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And then verse 11, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth, yet is one of the seven, and goeth into perdition. Verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, who have received no kingdom as yet, but will receive power as kings for one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. In other words, this end-time system will be an unholy unity between a false religion and a political state. And it will be powerful. In fact, if you don't renounce Christ in that day and do religion their way, now get it, you have to renounce Christ and do religion their way. If you don't do that, they will kill you. This religion headquartered in Rome, Italy, is a political, civil, and religious entity. Verse 14, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Notice, with Jesus. With Jesus will be his chosen, his called, and his faithful followers. That's talking about Christians. It's talking about that very narrow group, that remnant that I spoke of a few minutes ago, that has truly repented of their sins and really asked Jesus Christ to be their Savior and submitted to his Lordship. And when they fail, which everyone fails, they confess because the Holy Spirit is in them. That's what this is talking about. True Christians. And what is it about Christians? 
what is the distinguishing fact about true Christians? Well, let's, let's look at verse 14 again. These shall make war with the Lamb, the false religious system, the worldwide religious system that is false, and the ungodly state, and the Lamb shall overcome them. How many times have I said this in the book of Revelation? This is why Jesus gave this book, not to tickle us with fanciful interpretation, but to get the essential message. And I repeat it again and again and again because I want you to get it. Because that's why God gave this book. The world system is going to make war with you. False religion is not going to like you. The multitudes of people are not going to like you. You are not going to be Mr. or Mrs. Popular. If you take a stand for Jesus, and you may die, you certainly will suffer. You will be persecuted. I don't care which era you live in, if you are faithful to Jesus and faithful to the Word, and you will not budge, and if you're a preacher that preaches what I'm preaching, you're not going to be Mr. or Mrs. Popular. It's never been that way. It never will be that way. The only preachers who are popular, the only so-called Christians who are popular with the world are those who are so worldly and have fallen so far away from Christ in the Word of God that you can't tell the difference between them and the unsaved because they're probably not saved anyway. But the message of this book is that the world will make war with the Lamb, with Jesus and his followers. But notice, the Lamb shall overcome them. Why? Because he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him, Christians, true Christians, are called, chosen, and faithful. And the distinguishing thing that, that sets Christians, true Christians, is saved apart from everyone else is that they are faithful. They are faithful. True Christians are faithful. That means Jesus is the most important thing to them. How dare you say, you ungodly false teachers, how dare you say never ever ask an unsaved person to repent of their sin? How dare you say something so unbiblical? How dare you modern evangelicals say that you can have Jesus as your Savior and never live for him and still be saved? And if you ever believed at any time in your life and you've fallen away from Christ and you've even renounced Christ and you even become an atheist, as some have said, you're still saved because at one point in your life you said you prayed and received Christ or you believed mentally in Jesus. How dare you say such heresy? The, the saved people who belong to Jesus are the, what? It says it right here. Look at it, would you? It's in black and white. Look at it. Saved people are the faithful. Let that sink into your head. Saved people are the faithful. True Christians are faithful. That means Jesus is the most important thing to them. And you can tell it by talking to them. They are faithful to Jesus. They are faithful to the Bible. You can tell it by talking to them. You can tell it by watching how they behave and the decisions that they make. What they do, what they don't do. They are faithful to Jesus. They are faithful to the Bible. They're not, they're, they are not faithful to a pretty and popular religion that teaches things that are contrary to his word. And they stand behind the true teaching of God's word. And they stand behind people who teach God's word straight. They are the faithful and they are a remnant. If you want to be a part of the popular crowd, just turn this off and go away. Because the Word of God won't sink into your mind. You've rejected it. Just go away if you want to go away. But know this before you turn it off. When you die, you're going to go to hell. Not because you don't listen to me. But because you're not part of the faithful. Because you don't follow Jesus. Because you want to be a part of the popular crowd. I'm warning you. No. No, no, no. 
God's warning you. What do you think he put all this stuff in the book of Revelation and elsewhere in Scripture? To warn you because he cares about you. But if you choose to just want to be popular with the masses, be one of the in-group, you've made your choice. You sure aren't going to belong to Jesus. You're not going to belong to his group. That's for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Again, popularity means nothing. <laughs> Wide is the way that leads to destruction, and many go therein, Jesus said. Popularity means nothing. You get a desire to be a part of the popular crowd, the popular Christian crowd, the mega churches that never talk about sin, that never talk about repentance. They, they just don't. They got, a, they got a game show host for a pastor, a cross between a game show host and a stand-up comedian with his dirty blue jeans and his untucked shirt, making stupid jokes, acting like a buffoon. Oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. He can talk for 40 minutes and, and 35 minutes you're, you're thinking about what, a, what, a, what an exciting person he is to listen to. <laughs> you, think that's, you think that's the Holy Spirit working in him? And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the whores sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues, multitudes and multitudes. Again, popularity means, means nothing. This false religion of the end times has many members from all over the world. It's leading them all to hell. And the ten horns, verse 16, which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Interesting. What we see here is double cross and treachery. treachery. The, false religion, the false religion, like all false religion, double crosses Jesus with her false teachings. Let me say it again. The false religion, like all false religions, double cross Jesus by claiming to be Christians but teaching things that are contrary to Scripture. Teaching things that appeals to the crowds, but Jesus despises. But eventually, her unsaved members turn against her. When a church, when a church's teachings are designed to appeal to a large number of unsaved people, they are cultivating trouble for themselves. A church that doesn't demand repentance and a sincere commitment to Christ and to the word of God from its members will serve as a religious harbor for the unsaved. It'll be a harbor for the spiritually dead who tolerate and promote unrighteousness, and it's going to backfire on that religious system because it's all about self. I'll never forget. I started going to this good Baptist church uh, uh, with a good preacher anyway. I, he loved the Word of God. But you know, he preached, and he preached a tough message when he taught the Word of God. But when it came to salvation, he just, he just preached this easy believism. Just... Believe, and you're saved. And I went away. I left town, and I came back many, many years later and met with him because I always liked the guy. And he told me that he, he, he explained all the trouble he had in his church, and eventually it just dissolved. And he filled me in on all the different things that were happening in that church, and he looked at me, and I can still see him looking at me, and he said, Mike, you know what I concluded the problem was? I said, you know what? Most of those people were unsaved. There you go. He preached this easy believism. All you got to do is believe. 
No repentance. No, no, no. Never. No. No commitment to following Christ. No, no. So he had a bunch of people who believed they had an intellectual assent to the facts of Jesus. Big deal. Satan has that. And they called themselves Christians. And they corrupted his church. And it collapsed upon its own moral rot. And that's exactly what you see happening right here. A church like that is nothing more than a harbor for the spiritually dead. Verse 17. For God hath put it for God hath put into their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman whom thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. God uses the actions of evil people and evil systems like this false church to bring about his own sovereign purposes. God, doesn't, God does not applaud evil. God does not applaud, he does not applaud evil. He does not sanction evil. He does not force anyone to do that which is evil, but he is big enough and he is smart enough to use their bad to bring about good. God is never outsmarted. God is never outmaneuvered. Let's just quickly go into chapter 18. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was, in, the earth was lightened by his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great has fallen, has fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have waxed rich, rich through the abundance of her indulgences. In other words, the party is over for sinners. This is exactly what the future holds for them. This is exactly what's going to come to pass. The party is over for sinners. The world system is destroyed. The system made up of people, made up of people for people all over the world who excluded God from their life, that world system has crashed. The ungodly world gave its people wealth, the ungodly world system gave people its entertainment and its immorality and a false religion. But as we see here, it all comes crashing down in the end. Again, the purpose for the book of Revelation, to show you. The world keeps people occupied, you know, and keeps their mind off of God and off of the reality of hell. And eternity, but in the end, it brings eternal misery in the lake of fire. You can't run from truth. We'll pick it up in verse 4 next time. Continue studying with me at the Scripture Verse by Verse website, which is found at thebibleversebyverse.com. Make sure you check it out. Begin a verse by verse study with me. Go from Genesis through Revelation using my audio Bible messages. Start in the beginning, go all the way to the end if you want. That's, I still think, the best way to do it. Start in Genesis, go all the way through Revelation, or study any book of the Bible that you want to study by clicking and listening. But you've got three complete series going through the Bible there at thebibleversebyverse.com. And please remember, I'm not underwritten by a large church or denomination. This has been a faith ministry for over 30 years. I just give out the Word of God and trust that God will move His remnant to soak up the word, to love the word, to pray for me, and to give.
You can be a part of this ministry by clicking the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com. Until next time, so long.